Axel is very lazy and he makes me do his job. So I, Olive Tree, will take you through the news today. First of all, BSG announced changes to the scav reputation. If you do have maxed scav reputation, which is level 6, you get different benefits. And thanks to logical solutions, there, are, there is a graph with different numbers, which I will explain. So this is your karma level, from minus 7 to 6. 6 is max. Savage cooldown modifier. It means uh, how much time it takes in between your raids for your scav to, to be able to run the raids. I think original timer is like 30 minutes. And the better your scav karma is, the less time you have to wait. So in other words, we take 30 minutes, multiply it by 0 0.4, and we get 12 minutes. So with next scav karma, you will have to wait only for 12 minutes to run the next scav. Scav case time modifier. Same thing. In order to get the scav case, depending on different options, you have to wait less. With max scav karma, you have to wait twice less, as the modifier is 0.5. Paid exit cost modifier. I think that relates to Uber, aka whenever you pay for the car exit. And I think original price is around 5,000, maybe 6,000. And with max scav karma, it halves. So instead of paying 5,000, you pay 2.5. Bot follow chance. Whenever you play as a scav, you can uh, use your hand and uh, do this and scavs will follow you, but not always. There is a chance that they won't. And with max scav karma, there is a 100% chance scavs will follow you, which is a very neat thing. Scav equipment spawn chance modifier. Basically, the higher the number, the better your equipment when you spawn as a scav. With 17, you've got high chance of spawning with entrance uh, lab keycards, ladexes, a lot of cash, grenades. You get the point. Price modifier. This relates to the fan's price and how much you pay for the items when you buy from him. I personally don't buy anything from fans, so it doesn't really affect me much, but if you do, with maxed out uh, scav karma, you pay 0.8 of original price. Also, with maxed karma, there are no hostile bosses, there are no hostile scavs. Um, scav attack support falls, falls true. So, whenever you fight someone, scavs will help you out. I wonder if it also relates to the uh, scav trader. So if you're fighting a scav trader, other scavs will help you out as well. Exfiltration price modifier, no idea what this stands for. Available exit, uh, 6. So whenever you've got max scav karma, there is more available extractions for you. Next part of news is from BSG's Twitter. Improvements coming to Oculus Audio and Reserve Interchange and Shoreline. This is really great because we all know how the sound works currently. A uh, new version of DLSS, hopefully gonna help with the frames. Visual corrections, corrections to remove fog inside the rooms, basements, bunkers on reserve and interchange. This is a really big thing, this is a really big change, and let me show you why. In the meanwhile, while I'm loading into the raid, Axel will take you through today's sponsor. You know what, and while we're loading into the raid, because it might take some time, let me talk about the sponsor of the video, that is Raid Shadow Legends. You can literally play the game while playing the game, without wasting a single second. And do you know what I like about Raid Shadow Legends? Is the way you can customize your champions. All of us love customizing Tarkov guns, uh, applying different modifications, and you can do the same raid. They have plenty of different champions to choose from, and a billion ways of customizing those champions. If you've never heard about Raid Shadow Legends, which you probably have, it's a free mobile game which you can play on your phone or on PC with amazing graphics. So what does Raid stand for? R. Regular updates and content. A stands for Arena, and unlike in Tarkov, Arena is already available in Raid for all the players, where you can challenge other champions. I, I play Raid Shadow Legends. D, D, stands for Doom Tower, which you can climb, defeat powerful champions, and earn amazing rewards. And right now, it is Raid's fourth anniversary, so they will be adding a lot of new events, new champions, uh, free promo codes and other stuff to the game. So if you want to try the game out, feel free to scan this QR code to download the game or use the link down in the description or the pinned comment. And if you're a new player, you will receive a welcoming bonus pack completely for free. And if you are a returning player or you already have a Raid Shadow Legends account, feel free to use the code 4 years rate to get in-game bonuses and celebrate Raid's 4 year anniversary. So this is how Reserve Hallway currently looks like with some fog in it. You know what? Even if I take my glasses off, I can't see shit. This is ridiculous. This is literally ridiculous. Ooh, ZB lol, thank you so much for the follow. Axel will appreciate that. And you know what? Some people say, olive tree, olive tree. Just use a flashlight. Yeah, this is very helpful. Thanks. I try my best to play around in OBS settings to show you how it might look like whenever we get the patch. And you know what? Let me shoot the lamp out. Oh yeah, bullets, who needs bullets? And 
Uh, you can still see the fog at the back of the hallway, but it looks a bit better. So I assume it's gonna look something like this, but without the fog at the back. So you get the you get the idea. All right, next up, notification system for banned cheaters based on player reports. I am really excited about this system. I think it's gonna work something like whenever you sell the items on the flea market, you will get a little notification at the bottom of your right um, corner, and maybe you'll be, you will be able to go to the traders and see which cheater been banned. However, the only thing I do not agree with is this, based on player reports. So in other words, if you did report the cheater you died to and he got banned, you will receive the notification. If you died to the cheater, but you did not report him, you will not. I think this is not really fair and you should receive the notification in any case. It doesn't matter if you did report the cheater or you, or you didn't. If you did die to a cheater and he got banned, you should know. No matter if you did report him or you didn't. Next thing is geometry and lighting fixes for Streets of Tarkov. Uh, glad to know they're working on the map. Hopefully it's gonna bring a better performance. Networking fixes aimed at improving connection stability and reducing the number of disconnects while loading into the raid. Um, I was getting a couple of bugs whenever I'm loading into the game, so whenever I start loading loot, the game would just say game aborted and kick me out, and in order to fix this, I have to restart the game. And after restarting the game, I can either connect, reconnect to the same raid, or I can leave the raid and keep all of my loot, so there was no penalty. I think fi uh, fixes aimed at this error and maybe at some other ones. Improvements to UI for putting offers on the flea market based on the previous balancing changes. Not entirely sure what it means, but hopefully it's going to be easier to sell stuff on the flea market and it will take less time. Bug fixes in the group system and AI. Great. Transition to Unity 2021. Good. It means uh, devs will have uh, more tools to work with, which will speed up the development of the game. Also, a pretty cool thing that I found, well, not I, Axel found a few days ago. It's really weird. I can't find Axel's tweet. However, the whole point of the tweet is that ChatGPT got released into Unity and devs can type different things like ChatGPT, please create uh, 500 random objects on the map and it will do it for them saving a lot of time so maybe things like this will speed up the development even more olive tree was with you this is more or less it for today you will probably not see me in the next video so have a good one